Here's a little. Oh, that's, that's some volume. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I went out now. I lost power. I right, it's back. It's something like most Christians. Huh? Sometimes we lose power and then we get it back. You know? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to say thank you to the worship team. They did an amazing job. Can you yeah. 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 Hallelujah. For the presence of the Lord in this place. And uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Matt, who's not here tonight, for in this this invitation to come back here. It's always an honor to be here. You know, uh, I told you guys before I have family here in Patterson, and so like right across the street. And, and so uh, it's it's good to come back. And uh, and you guys are amazing. You know what I mean? I, I really like being here. It's you you, you guys are easy. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing, right? It's easy. You guys are easy to preach to. In the, in the in past, uh, Pastor Matt's been telling me about the things that God's been doing here. I think that's awesome. Uh, the Spirit of God is moving, right? Yeah. He's moving in the hearts of people, and He's calling them to uh, uh, to a higher calling. Uh, and that higher calling is the sonship of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So I, I want to. I just want to say thank you. Uh, Pastor Matt for having me back and for all of you. Uh, how many of you have been, you never seen me before? You don't know who I am. Okay, good. Anybody else? Okay, so my, my name is Dustin Young. I, I pastor Elton Assembly uh, in Elton, Louisiana. I also uh, am the founder of Lloyd's Harvest Ministries, which is an evangelistic ministry. Matt and I have been friends for over a decade, I guess. Is that right, Rob? Yeah. So something like that, about a decade we met, we met in prison. <laughs> Uh, doing prison ministry, not in prison. But, uh, we probably could have been there, but we weren't. We were ministering. And uh, I met them, and we kind of just became friends. And uh, and we've been knowing each other ever since. And so uh, I don't I don't preach with notes like Matt does. I don't know if he does that anymore, does he? I've been getting on him about that. You hear that, Matt? So uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with notes. Praise the Lord. All right, so this this evening, I, you know, I, when I come, I don't really know what I'm going to preach. So I just kind of just let the Holy Spirit kind of guide me, you know? And what I felt uh, this morning was something about the new creation. So that was the first thing I was talking to the Lord about something, and then all of a sudden he just puts new creation, in, you know, like a flash. And I'm like, wow, I, I, so you want me to talk about the new creation tonight? I, I don't know. So I, I just kind of been sitting on that, just waiting and hear from the Lord. And what I saw, or what I uh, let me say, I hate to say felt. I'm trying to get, trying to change my terminology because feelings are fickle, right? right. Yeah. So, so I didn't feel, but I, 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 I felt or I sensed the Holy Spirit leading me tonight to minister to you guys on on a on a tender topic, and that tender topic is surrender. Yeah, surrender. Uh, see, because I, you know, I saw you guys at the, at the at the altars here praying during the worship, giving your heart, giving your life, laying it down. Sometimes maybe you're just pleading to God. Maybe you're you're desperate for God to do something in your life. You know, is anybody in here like that? Yeah. You're just desperate. I want God to do something, right? So, but let's change that word desperate to I got a zeal. I'm zealous for God to do something with me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Like I really want him to use me. Yeah. So, but for him to use you, you have to give yourself to him. Yeah. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. You got to give yourself to him. And I've, I've heard a lot of people say, uh, talk about, man, we just need a move of God. And that's a phrase, that's a terminology that we've, that we've adopted into the church. But it really is not truly biblical. Because God's already moved. He's waiting for us to move so he can do something through you. Amen? So we need to get, if you want a move of God, then let's move. <laughs> I had a friend of mine one time, so he said, he said you want to see a, a move of God? I said, yeah. <laughs> there we go. I said, oh man, you're clouding, man. But but he's real. He's true because God is in me, yeah. 
And this is part of the new creation, and this is the thing where submission comes in place. See, like, when you got born again, is anybody in here born again? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, so when you got born again, what happened to you? A brand new creation. You became a new creation, right? The old things passed away, and all things became new. new. See, we can quote that, but is it a reality with you? Do you really understand what God did in you? Yes. Like we can read Romans chapter 6, right? And that's one of my favorite. I'll read Romans 6, 1 through 11, anytime I can. You know, and I'll preach it anytime I can. Yeah. I thought about doing it tonight. But no, I won't. <laughs> but I want to. But anyway, Romans 6, what's it say? What happened? It says, don't you know? Right? Don't you know what happened to you? Don't you understand that when you got born again, you died with Christ? And you were buried with Christ yes. and you were risen with Christ. Yes. Don't it said you were planted in the likeness of his death, right? Yes. Yes. And you shall be raised up in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. A new life. But this is the this is an area that we oftentimes get confused with. Because we just think the Holy Spirit is living in me, right? right. And like he's gonna guide me, but you know, I have to, we have to like uh, grow in him and do stuff with him for an uh, extended amount of time or whatever before he actually can use us. That, that's, 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 that's not true. The moment you get born again, God, uh, he puts inside of you all of himself. And matter of fact, he joins his spirit with your spirit and makes one spirit out of it. Like if you are joined with the Lord, you're one spirit with him, the Bible yeah. says. So when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes in and he makes himself one with your spirit. That is amazing. That, look, listen, a new, crea a new creation. You know what that is? That's a new creature that has never existed before. Yes. Like, when, like how many of you have a new car? Yes. Not new to you, but brand new. Like off the showroom floor. Anybody ever bought one like that? Yeah. Okay, a few. Okay, so... What happens if you went to the car dealership and said, listen, man, I want a 2000. Do they even have new cars now? I don't know. But say it's a 2023 uh, 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 Silverado or something like that. And they bring you a 1985 Silverado. I think it <laughs> yeah, a Silverado. <laughs> but, but they would say, you know, here it is. It's like, no, dude, that's, that's a 1985. I want a, I want a 2023 model. But no, this one's like new. No, I don't want something like new. I want the new one. Yes. Give me the new one. See, new is something that's never been before. It's new. Yes. Amen? That's pretty normal, right? It's new. So if we're a new creature or a new creation, what is that then if it's not something that's never been before? <coughs> so what makes us different than the rest of the world? The Holy Spirit. But, but he's just living inside you? Is that what he's just housed inside you? And just he's just there? And maybe, you know, if you if you understand your Bible enough, you can might do the works of Christ? No, oh, he's teaching us. He or, or did he do something incredible? Yes. Did he do something so miraculous and so amazing that the world would just flip on its head to know what it is? Yes. Like, what happens if God would really make himself one? with you and what if god did a work in you that you could actually live a life like jesus christ did Hallelujah. what if you could wouldn't that be awesome yes. did you know you can yes. did you know you should yes. that's the plan of god yes. but you know how many christians believe that it's impossible to live like jesus lived you know what that's called Doubt and unbelief. That's, that's right. Doubt and unbelief. See, now watch. Let me kind of clarify that. Hesitation. Reservation. Yeah. See, like, like if somebody came up here with stage four cancer, only two weeks to live, maybe. And, and if I was to ask anybody to come up here and cast this cancer out of this individual, how many of you would jump out of your chair and run over here with full assurance that if you prayed with them, they would live? We got two, three, four, five. 
Now, I'm gonna ask this question one more time. Full assurance that they will live. Can you guarantee it? No. See? Until we get to where we can say, yes, I can guarantee it, you still have doubt and unbelief. Did Jesus ever have any doubt? No. See, it would be impossible, in his mind, it would be impossible for anybody not to be healed, regardless of what they had. <coughs> Blindness, deafness, cancers, well, it didn't matter. To him, you're sick? Okay, well, come here, I'll fix that for you. There was no hesitation, no reservation. See, sometimes when we pray for people, there's a little bit of reservation, isn't there? It's like, ah, I'm hoping. See, you went from faith to hope. Mm. Ah, you, you, you went from faith to, 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 to you know, uh, wishing. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to show you something in Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew 17. <clears throat> now, you, you guys might know the stories in a couple of other places, but it's about the about when Jesus came out off of the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember that? Starting in verse 14, so we're going to Matthew 17, 14. And he came down to, to see this. Verse 14 says, And when they had come the multitude, to a multitude, to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. That, that's the answer. Why could we not cast, cast them out? Because of your what? Unbelief. The unbelief, a little faith. Right. For as surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from there, or move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Right? Yeah. Did he say that? <laughs> so nothing shall be what? Impossible. However, this kind does not go out except for prayer, prayer and fasting. And he's not talking about the devil. Right. So watch. I, I want to show you something. If you remember right, just a couple of chapters back in Matthew chapter 10. He sent the, the 12 out. Right? To go... And give him power over every unclean spirit. Yep. Did he not? Yep. I give you authority. I give you power over every unclean spirit. Over every demon. Over every uh, uh, demonic force. I give you power over it, he says. Then he says, I also give you the ability or the power or the authority to cure all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Yes. That's what he said. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Yes. Now... They went out and did what he said. Your Bible, if you read the other Gospels, you'll find what I'm saying is true. They went out and they did the work. Now, check this out. We're only seven chapters later. And they're trying to cast out a demon out of this boy with epilepsy. And they can't do it. They can't cure the boy. So when they come, when Jesus comes down off the mountain, transfiguration, right? He comes down. And they're there, and the man's pleading, please heal my son. Your disciples couldn't do it. So he rebukes the devil. It comes out, and the boy is healed. Then the disciples later say, why could we not cast it out? Let me give you the behind the scene. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of explanation of what just transpired here. He told them that I give you authority over how many devils? Oh, I give you authority to cure all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Did he not say that? Yeah. 
So why did they say, why could we not cast it out? Who told them they could not cast it out when he told them they could? What? Well, so let's look into it a little bit deeper. I think it's in Mark's gospel. I think it's there. I'm not sure. I don't have it marked in my Bible. And I'm, I'm thinking it's Mark. Could be Luke too. But in one of those gospels, it says that the boy or the demon threw the boy down. And he started, you know, to convulse and whatnot. When Jesus showed up, when Jesus showed up, the boy or the demon threw the boy down and started convulsing and, and bouncing around on the ground, having these seizures. Yes. And it was, it was awful. And Jesus called me, asked the father, how long the boy's been doing this? And then he rebukes the devil when he comes out. Amen. But didn't come out right away. What happens? When he rebukes it, what, the, the boy falls down as though he's dead. dead. Right. And everybody thought he was dead. Except for Jesus. Yeah. That's right. <coughs> See, when you go to do things for the Lord, when it, whether, whether it's witnessing, whether it's praying for the sick, whatever it is that you're going to do, sometimes some things happen and it tricks your eyes to make you think wrong. <coughs> Because you'd see somebody fall out, start convulsing, start having this seizure, you're going to start freaking out and saying, well, maybe it's not working. Did Jesus say that? No. See, you're doubting unbelief. You've got to stand firm in who you are in Christ Jesus. You've got to realize and come to an understanding that you are a child of God. That you are a new creation. God made you special. He made you like himself. Yes. He put a spirit inside you that you might do the works of Christ. Yes. Why? So that the world will know that he is Lord. Because yes. nobody can do the works of Christ unless they are of Christ. The world can't do what we can do. Amen. But we reserve ourselves to do what the world can do. <coughs> and we say, well, it's impossible. You know how many people I talk to all the time when I ask them how they're doing and what's going on? And you know, you know what they give me? The doctor's report. Mm. Yeah. I don't blame them. Some people are really, really sick. But they give me the doctor's report. Since when did a doctor ever give you a good report? <laughs> they don't want to give you a good report. I was type 2 diabetic. God healed me from type 2 diabetes. I went to the, back to the doctor. I said, God healed me. He checked my blood. He said, hey, uh, uh, I guess, all right. What's up? What did you do? I said, God healed me. I'm healed of diabetes. I wanted to preach to them and say, you know, by, you know, it was at the, at the Calvary, and I was going to tell them the whole thing. By his stripes, I was healed. Amen. Yes. But he couldn't endure it. <laughs> but now I go in there, and I said, well, what happens if my blood does this or that or, you know, this, whatever? He said, well, uh, the only thing I can do is prescribe medication, but you probably won't take it. I said, no, I won't. <laughs> I'll trust the Lord. See, what is the doctor going to tell you? He's going to give you what he's been taught, what he's been trained in. He's going to give you the best report he can. But we have a report right here from the Lord. This word is true. This word is sure. Amen? It is. But the problem is we don't believe it. Like if I told you, watch, you guys, I might get in trouble. Go ahead. Okay. Is God your father? Yes. Did God give you his spirit? Yes. yes. Did Jesus in John 14, 12 say the works I do, you do also, and greater works than these than you do? Yes. Did he mean like some of the works or did he mean all the works? All the works. All the works. So did he ever speak speak something like a word and it came to pass? 
Can you do that? Do you think you can do that too? Oh, yes. Now, I'm not talking word of faith stuff. You know, I'm not going to get to the hyper faith stuff. But no, 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 no. I'm talking Bible truth. Yes. I'm talking, I'm talking serious stuff here. Like, like you are authentically, sincerely hidden in Christ. Yes. And your life is hidden in him. And all you want to do is what he says. Right. You are a true follower of the Lord. You're not living for yourself. You know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So watch. So if then, Jesus said in John chapter 5, he said, listen, I do, my father shows me stuff. And whatever he shows me, that's what I do. I do what he shows me. And he's going to show me some even greater things than these that you might know that he sent me. But then he says, my father raises the dead. So the son shall raise whomever he wills. Did you catch the word? He said, my father raises the dead. So I do like my father. Whoever I will to raise from the dead, I will raise from the dead. He didn't say whoever my father tells me to raise from the dead. He said whoever I will to That's raise right. from the dead. That's right. Why could he say that? How could he say that? Do you know that the Jews that then wanted to kill him? You know why? Because he called himself a, the son of God. Yeah. Are you a son of God? Yeah. Are you a child of God? Yeah. They want to kill you too, probably. Yeah. Watch this, though. He says, I, if I will to do it, then I have the commandment to do it. Why? Because my father and I are one. Are you not one with the Father now? Yes. Don't you have his divine nature in you now? Is his, isn't his, his divine nature, his spirit, one with your spirit? So if you look at your, if you're a total man, spirit, soul, and body, the, the, you, the, the, the spirit of the man is the nucleus of, of a man. And from this nucleus, it goes out into your soul and from your soul into your body. So if your spirit is walking in one with, with the Lord, walking in union with God, you have his divine nature. Listen, how many of you want to do right all the time? You want to do right. You have this, this like unction inside you that compels you to live righteously, right? Well, where did that come from? That's from your, this, this new nature inside you. You became a new creature. You're not the same person you once were. You have something else now. You have oneness with God in your spirit. Yeah. But yet, see, your mind ain't, ain't caught up yet. In your solical parts, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. That's what you're trying to live by in Christ, and it doesn't work. Because the natural mind cannot comprehend the things of God for they're spiritually discerned. Yes, that's right. So it comes out of your spirit and it comes up inside you and you've got to learn to obey this new nature. This new nature will not do anything contrary to the word of God. Hallelujah. Never. It will never want to do anything contrary to the word of God. You understand that? Why wow, it's awful quiet in here. So this, this spirit inside you is also one with your spirit. So if you're led by the spirit, then you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. So if, so if I wanted to say something to come to pass, if I'm trusting that it came from my spirit, are you with me? Yes. It will not be contrary to this. Hallelujah. It will line up with my Father's will. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so I'll speak it. Yeah. And I have all authority to believe it to come to pass. Yeah. Watch, I'm going to show you something that's going to kind of freak you out a little bit. But Isaiah 55, what does it say? It says, like when God said, I'll send forth my word. And it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing to which I sent it. 
So would it be wrong for me to say, just like my father speaks his word and sends it out, it will not come back to him void, but it shall, it shall accomplish what he pleases, and it shall prosper in the thing for which he sent it. If I send my word out, it will not come back to me void, but it will also prosper or accomplish the thing for which I sent it, and it will prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Yes. Why? Because my father made me like this. It's not high-minded, haughty thinking. It's what God did. It's me believing I am a new creature in Christ. It's called faith. It's called believing that what Christ accomplished at Calvary made me this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just didn't free me from sin, but he made me like him. Praise God. So now we can walk with confidence and walk in victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil because we have God's spirit abiding with us. Yes. Hallelujah. Good. So that makes us something different. Yeah. Now where does the submission come in? You must submit. Yeah. You remember in James, it says resist the devil and he shall flee from you. We like to say that, but what's the first part of that? <laughs> submit to God. So you submit to God, and you and by do, by submission you resist. You want to know what that submission looks like? See, some people have this idea that submission is, oh God, I just give you everything. Oh God. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's you pleading and hoping for God to do something that He's already done. Amen. He's already done. Yes. So what he's expecting you to do, to submit, is to submit to truth and start confessing that truth. Amen. Start believing that truth Amen. and start professing that truth. Amen. Like you don't, you don't, you know, he's going to become your Lord until you confess him as Lord. That's right. And so a confession without a profession is not, not anything. You have to also profess Christ. What's that mean? Uh, it kind of means like you got to live like, like you, yeah, like you got to live. So, so watch this. I'm going to show you what, what submission looks like. Okay? Say you're in a, let's say that uh, here's this, this thing that used to catch you all the time. Like, I don't want to say habitual sin, but we could call it habitual sin. But it's something the devil always knows he can trip you up with. Some little thing that always used to get you. Yep. And you walk around in fear. Uh, and maybe I can preach on that a little bit later. I don't know, but Romans, out of Romans chapter 8. You've not been given a spirit of fear of getting under bondage. Amen. See, right. but what that means is that you're afraid that you can fall and go back into sin anytime. So you're walking on eggshells and worried that you're going to fall back in sin. Has anybody ever lived like that? That's not the way you're supposed to live, friend. You're supposed to be sure of your salvation. Confident in what God's done. How is that faith in what Christ did for you? That's not. You're still wondering that if it's good enough, it's sufficient enough to keep you. My Bible says it is. What does yours say? So, so submission looks like this. Like just all of a sudden you're worshiping the Lord. This thought would enter into your mind that's like, oh my God, what? No, no, no. And, and you're trying to, I rebuke you, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. Do not, listen to me, do not try to rebuke a devil. Well, what do we do? Just let him have his way? No. If you try to rebuke a devil, you just let him know that he's got you. So what you do when the devil starts coming at you, don't, don't admit. Don't admit he's got you. <coughs> don't admit it. What you do is you flip the script. And you say, Lord, I thank you, oh Lord. I thank you, Lord, that I'm no longer the man I used to be. I'm no longer the woman I used to be. Oh God, you blessed me. You washed me clean with the blood of the Lord. God, you made me holy and dangerous in the book of God in your sight. There is no unclean thought in me. You made me pure. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you did it. 
Press the Lord. Oh God, I thank you what you've done for me at Calvary. Oh Lord, you bless me and you cause me to walk with you. You cause me to dwell with you. You cause me to sit down with you in heavenly places. You bless me with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Bless you, God. I love you, Lord. That's how you, that's how you submit to God. What does the devil do? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> he, he goes back to his, he goes back to his master. What are you doing here? Well, I did what you said. And well, he started praising God. <laughs> you must have did it wrong. No, I did everything you said. But he's he's praising God now. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get him. Well, go back. No, I ain't going back. You go. Because <laughs> he, 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 he's saying the name of Jesus and the power of God is there. And I know he knows what he's saying because I sense the power. Yeah, yeah. I ain't going back. You can go. Good. You see, that's real. But it comes with you having not an identity crisis. Most of the church has an identity crisis. We, we, can, we, we know all the terminology. We know the language of Christianity, but it's not a reality with us yet. That's right. It has to be real. It has to be genuine and authentic and solid where you are unmovable and unshakable in the faith. That's not my words. It's in the book. So you have to be movable. Well, how do you do that then? How about start believing what God said to be true? Come on. Why don't we just start right there? And why don't we just start believing that we don't have it all yet? In here. We have it all in our spirit. We just don't have it here. Well, I don't believe we need to do all that. Well, this say say bondage. I don't care. It's up to you. But if you want to walk free, yes. just start believing the word. It's good. Start believing the word. Now, no, no, watch. Okay. How can I say this? All right, so let's look at this. How many of you would say you actually believe God's word to be truth? Absolute truth. See, we all do. All right. So if it's absolute truth, then Isaiah 53, where it says, by his stripes, we were healed. Amen. We're healed. We're healed. Yeah. That's right. Does that settle it with you? If it settles it with you, then why would you ever go to a doctor? Whoa. Because, see, because if it was so real, if it was so sure, you were so sure that you were healed by his stripes, why would you ever go to a doctor for any type of ailment? Why would it be, oh, let's take a Tylenol. Let's take this or take that. Why would you do that? Anyone? Unbelief. Unbelief. It's not settled. That's right. But I'm not trying to bring a condescending word and make us feel bad. No, we just peel it off the scab and say, look, this is the problem. Let's fix it. Come on. What's, how do we fix it? Let's start believing the word. Yeah. Let's start believing God's word to be true. Yeah. Let's just start right now, right where you are, and just confess, and you know, Lord, I, 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 I repent. I, I, I really have a hesitation, a reservation concerning your word. Help me. Why don't you fast and pray, maybe? Yes. Why don't you seek God's truth? Why don't you seek his word and find out that to be true rather than trying to find some fancy message to tell somebody? Are you all right? Yes. Am I all right? Yes. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? See, sometimes we want to, it's like trivia. We want to get the, God's word in us so we, we can know stuff. So when, we, when we're when we around people, we know how to pray better. We can say fancy words when we pray. Yeah. Or or we can or we can talk the, the, the talk and make people think that we're very spiritual. 
Hello? Yeah. <laughs> it's working. Amen. See, I'm telling you the truth, am I not? Yes. So what, how do we fix that then? It's a simple solution. I just told you. You know what repentance is? Turn. If you're going this way, stop. That's the way. So you turn from here and you start heading this way. That's right. So just stop. Right. And go the right way. Amen. Amen. Can I do it, No. <laughs> so, but do, do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. yes. But it sound, it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the submission thing comes in play. To submit or to acknowledge the truth of God's word concerning your identity requires you, first of all, to read this book. You have to read the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, it means nothing to you. And there's a lot of folks that will read, you know, Old Testament stuff and get into Old Testament. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I will tell you this. Until you know who you are in Christ, you should probably stay in the new. Amen. Yes. And did you know that the four Gospels, as good as they are, only, you know what, you know what the four Gospels do? They reveal to you what you're supposed to look like after you get saved. Right. Right. Looking at the life of Christ. That's what you're supposed to be doing after you got saved. Do you know that there is no, you cannot identify with anybody in the four Gospels other than Jesus Christ? Did you know that? You cannot identify with anyone in the, in, the, in the four Gospels other than Christ. Because he's the only one who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in him like you. Yes. That's good. He's the only one. All the apostles, everybody, no. Not until Calvary. Not until he was raised from the dead. You understand that? So until the new covenant, everything is old covenant. So when you see people in the old covenant, like sometimes like, oh, just like you, just like you healed the woman with the issue of blood, oh God, I come to you. No, you don't. Not if you're saved. You have a promise from the Father. You don't need to beg God for healing. You don't need to crawl on your hands and knees. It's a privilege to you. You can boldly go to the throne of grace. And you can and you can just accept what he gave you. Because you're a son, you're a daughter, you have that right. Yeah. It's your right. Amen. Back then they had to do things. They had to they, they, they needed something. They needed God. You have God. Thank you. you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So go back and read the epistles. Paul does a great job of explaining what you have in Christ. Did you know that? Yes. He does a wonderful job explaining it. But sometimes we read it with a biased opinion. We read it thinking, oh, well, you know, uh, yeah, he says that, but that's not what it really means. <laughs> but it means something else. Oh, he got a thorn in the flesh. Oh, I got a thorn in the flesh. Okay, he didn't say sickness. Are we okay? So, you have to believe this book to be true. Yes. And if you'll get a grasp of that, what I'm telling you, stuff will it, it'll become more amazing than it ever was. Yes. The truth of the gospel will become so clear to you. You'll see it and you go, what? This is amazing. You, sometimes, like I go to the park, I tell people this all the time, but I go to the park to go walk and pray. And they got these people that's jogging and stuff, you know, and whatever, and kids playing. And I'm reading my Bible. And I'm like, what? You gotta be kidding me. You said, did you know you put that in there? I can't believe. Oh, praise God. You know, and, and I look, and these people are like, come on, baby, let's go. He's crazy man. But, you know, it's a treasure house. Like, I learn stuff every day. Yes. Every day. Like, today. Can I tell you what I learned today? 
Okay. Okay, the name of Jesus is powerful, right? Yeah. It's, it's the most powerful name ever was. The name of Jesus. There's power in that name. But did you know that just by the name itself, through you, like you, you just speak the name, just say the name, like you're doing something in the name of Jesus. Do you know that just saying the name doesn't wield any power? Because it's faith in the name. Amen. You gotta have faith in that That's name. Amen. Watch, you remember the sons of Sceva? Yeah. <laughs> they said the name. What happened to them? Huh? Did they cast out a devil or did they make them mad? Yeah. yeah. So, so my point is just saying the name of Jesus without faith in that name. That's right. Remember at the gate beautiful? Peter and John walking there, the guy is lame at the, at, at the gate. And what did he say? Children of God have I none, but such as I have given thee. And he, he jumped up and started walking, ran into the temple. What did they say? When the people were amazed. Why do you look at us as though we did this, you know, you know, our own power or our own holiness or whatever? Why are you looking at us like we did something special? It wasn't us, but it was the name of Jesus and faith in that name that made this man whole. I learned that today. I was like, what? Faith in the name. You've got to, you've got to, you got to wield the power of that name. And you do it by acknowledging and walking, not just, you know, not just saying it as a phrase, but with meaning behind it. That's when you get results. Yes, That's good. I think Matt said I got four hours. <laughs> and then I told him, I said, dude, that's kind of extreme. <laughs> you don't want to cut it down some? He's like, oh, no, they got it, Matt. <laughs> you know, Matt. Yeah. I'm joking, Matt. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He probably wanted to, though. <laughs> but this is what I want to do tonight. How many of you? This is probably the whole church. How many of you are just totally satisfied with where you are right now in Christ? Just totally satisfied with your work? Totally satisfied with your ministry? Just like, I'm, I'm good. Or do you want more? Do you want more? Do you want, do you want this power of the Holy Spirit to be so, so like a, like a Like a powerhouse inside of you just ready to blast. You want that? Yes. Did you know God wants that too? Yes. And did you know that you can have it at any moment in time? Yes. It's not like, like I know, I, look, Matt got on me. I'm, well, he didn't really get on me. But anyway, listen, I'm a little different. See, I used to, I used to have as a crutch for me was worship. I used to not, I could not do anything until I had worship. And I felt the presence of God. And I would get so moved by the Spirit. Now, I'm, and I learned that all I was doing was stirring up the Spirit inside me. That's right. But you know what I got? I got dependent upon the worship. Mm -hmm. And if the worship was no good, right. neither was I. Wow. If there was no worship and I needed, oh, I needed to do something, so I would, I don't sing, but I would sing yeah, out of desperation. <laughs> And it worked a little bit. But see, whatever you place dependency upon, if it's not the blood of Jesus Christ and the name of Christ Amen. is, is that Him? Amen. It's not what you're putting faith in. Amen? Amen. Amen? So it's like, you know, sometimes in the church we have to get worked up. And we think we need, we need to have all the worship and we get all this into the spirit moves. Then we can start praying for people. That's not the way it works. Like, I'm pretty sure if you've met somebody in Walmart, you know, you don't say, hey, hold on a second, man. And you go, hey, I got this worship CD, man. I'm going to be on aisle four. Tell everybody on aisle four. Jesus is doing the work. He's doing the movement on aisle four. Put it in there. And you run over there. Oh, yes, oh, Lord. Turn that over. Come to me. Be healed in Jesus. Where's that olive oil? I know they got some on the shelf. You, you know, that's not, you, you, don't, you don't have to do it that way. You are walking with the one who created all things. He lives in you. He is part of you now. So all you got to do is believe that he's in there. <laughs> that he's one with you. Believe who you are in him. And who he is in you. 
That's all you got to do. He's the one who told you to, what to do. That's right. He said, you lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You, you lay hands on them. You command devils to go. They'll go. Hallelujah. How? Because you'll be in my name. Yes. That's right. you, 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 you abide in my name. You abide in me. You abide in my name. My word will abide in you. Whatever you say will happen. Yes. Why? Because I said so. That's why. That's the Lord speaking. Yeah. You think he sent us out to do something we could not do? Of course not. So what I'm going to do, or ask the worship team to come back up. And he said, well, I thought you said you don't need to worship. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> I said, if it's your crutch, if it's what you have faith in. Yeah. But how, do you, how many of you know I think God likes music too? Yes. <laughs> I believe the Holy Spirit likes that. And this is what we're going to do. Some of you need healing in your bodies. I know it. Some of you are dealing with some oppression or depression. I'm not sure, but it's one of the two. And you're dealing with that. And it's a struggle for you. And you're, you're, you want God to deliver you. And you're asking God to deliver you. Come to believe that you are. So I'm going to ask for you to come up. But if you, whatever it is that you have need of, if you want to walk with God in a, in a, in a greater dimension than you've ever walked with Him before, when I say dimension, I'm not talking wacky stuff. I'm talking about you with a greater understanding, a revelation of who you really are in Jesus. If you want to walk like that, make your way up now. Just come through this altar. If you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you come up to the altar. If you need healing, you come up. And I know it might take a little while, but I feel like nobody should leave. If you come up here, don't, don't go without getting what you need from the Lord. Amen?